Rat. Roll no. And welcome everybody to another episode of the Animaniacast. And welcome everybody once again to another episode of the Animaniacast. This is the only podcast out there that's dedicated to the animated television series, Animaniacs. Yes. And here we talk about all the cultural references and gags that we can find. And uh, as well, we talk about other episodes of uh, cartoons in the Rugerverse, such as Tiny Toon Adventures, Freakazoid, and Pinky in the Brain. But today... We're talking about the reboot of Animaniacs, the second episode to be specific. I am Joey, and joining me once again is my brother Nathan. Huzzah! Alloweth our adventures to begin it. <laughs> Across the country in Georgia, it's Kelly. Leroy Jenkins! <laughs> <laughs> I, I could have sworn... You were just going to say, the dragon, the dragon. <laughs> I, oh, believe me, I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we are talking about episode two of Animaniacs, the reboot. I should be specific, uh, which <laughs> features Warner's Unbound, How to Brain Your Dragon, and Suffragette City. And uh, let's see, if someone were to ask you about this episode in just a few words... What would you tell him, Nathan? Uh, the dragon. <laughs> the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and Kelly, what about you? Uh, there, there was a dragon, and he was doing a lot of burninating. <laughs> he was. Uh, I get that reference. Oh, thank you. Thank I get you. it. Oh, I don't get it. What? the city. Trogdor the burninating. Home star runner. Oh. oh. Um. <laughs> what? Oh well, I haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't seen an episode of it's today. They don't get this reference. Yeah, I, yeah. Know, this is like Homestar. That was like ten years ago. ago? Yeah. No, like I, I think they're still doing stuff. Or there was like a game that came out a year or so ago. I, I don't know. There was some, 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 some activity. They did a very cool. Uh, they might be giants video. So I know them for that. That's for sure. It was but an experimental film, it right? It was. It was. And probably they've probably done a few other ones as well. They've been around forever. Uh, but anyway, anyway, well, I'm glad we finally, t- you know, took a lot of time to, ever, <laughs> to talk about it that. It took for us a moment. this long to finally mention Homestar. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> How many episodes did it take? We finally about did it. 190 something. <laughs> 95, I think. Anyway, well, we're finally getting to the timeless, I would say, element. When you say oh, finally, okay. this is only the second episode. That's true. But for <laughs> us, we already watched five of them. And they, none of them, none of the episodes that they gave for the media package really felt like a timeless, uh, you know, element to them. You yeah. Know, they and were, there's uh, still aspects on this episode that are going to be like oh, somewhat dated. But. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. But at the same time, I was like, okay, this is more at least getting closer to the Animaniacs that I I know, uh, which was which is nice. Uh, but I think before we get into our discussion, we better mention some Animaniacs news. This was and this was not usually the the good news that you like to hear from Animaniacs. It was a bumpy uh, week or so for the reboot after it was released. Let's talk about the the main one because this is in the first episode of Animaniacs, uh, and. We, you know, did our review last week, and we de- de- just went over our heads, I think. Um, I think, <laughs> Nathan, we were talking about Johnny Depp's on a poster. And I, I said think, Edward Scissorhands, because I saw he had scissors yeah, in his hand. Yeah, he has hand. scissors in his hand. <laughs> and then we were like, okay, that's that's cool. But what we didn't really put into the, the equation of that was the poster says, uh, Johnny Two, I believe it says, right? And then it says, uh, "Liar, liar!" I think telling lies, telling lies. That's right. 
And then it has this whole other thing right here with the with a uh, a prequel showing a baby eating something out of a jar uh, and saying like obviously supposed to be a young Johnny Depp. It really didn't make much sense to me. <laughs> so I kind of just went all right, I whatever. Still don't understand, <laughs> even <laughs> after finding out what it was. Of a- well, it's it when this basically went out, uh, you know, without much context. You see Johnny Depp and the words telling lies, or you at least see the picture of him. It just said Johnny. Uh, people immediately connected, which I don't blame them. Uh, to the recent uh, divorce and domestic abuse case between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. And as the time of the recording of this, Johnny Depp and Warner Brothers do not have a good relationship. I don't, I believe um, Warner Brothers is behind, I think, the, this Harry Potter series. I'm like, I'm, I'm not even following it. What is this new series called? The uh, Fantastic Beasts, and yeah. it, I think I think officially to, as of today, um, Mads Mikkelsen Michelson um, yeah. is going to replace him as um, is it um, bad Rind- guy Rind- Rind- Rindlewald. <laughs> Rindlewald. This bad guy guy. <laughs> He's going to be bad guy man. Well, anyway, th- there's a whole bunch of thing you know. There, I don't want to get really get into you know it too much because that's not us. That's not what we really talk about. But obviously, there's been a lot of back and forth between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp and Johnny Depp accusing her of, you know, domestic abuse towards him. I think she, and she accused and him. Versa. Yeah, yeah. Of him during him and back and forth. And, um, you know, who's telling the truth? Who's lying? I I don't really know because I don't really follow the case that much to really have any strong opinion either way yeah, about it's, it. Uh, it's not like we're making Animaniacs episodes here. It's not like we should be saying whether <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but but Johnny Depp uh, was was not welcomed back to this new Harry Potter film, and uh, people cried foul, saying he was the victim of domestic abuse. And then they see this poster saying "telling lies," and they're like, "Oh, Warner Brothers, how dare you?" And this and that. But but they needed to take into consideration this was made like two years ago. Exactly. So and I think, that's... Like, I think the allegations were out at that time, but um you know, there wasn't the recent uh, news about the, the Fantastic Beasts or anything and right. I think lost a lawsuit um, not here, I think in Europe, England maybe somewhere. Um it, it seems like with a visual gag like that, like you could change it like in somewhat of a post production. It's like you know, a couple frames of a song. It's not like the well, big, and, and like in the song, you're just saying you made sequels, try for prequels. So you could do any sequel and any prequel. Like, well, when I first saw this, I immediately th- thought to myself, wow, that is not cool. Cause even if they weren't talking about necessarily domestic violence or anything, they were still, I mean, that, that divorce case was out at the time. And I was just going, why would they even touch on this at all? Like, why would they mention Johnny Depp telling lines, anything like that? And then I, <laughs> there was an article that was written and it turns out I made a big mistake. I, <laughs> I retweeted it saying, Oh, here's the explanation of what probably actually the joke is about. Then I found out, Oh, this is like some alt right <laughs> uh, publication. <laughs> Until people started saying on Twitter, uh, do you know what he just retweeted? No, he's finally showing his true colors I know. to the world. Oh, my gosh. No. So I immediately had to take that down. But, but, <laughs> I think the point that's buried within that horrific <laughs> online place actually has a little bit of validity to yeah, it. Yeah, there's some the truth. Fact, like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Because the fact is, in 2018, taking a trip back in time, there was a meme video that was out that was popular for like a week and it was this johnny johnny yes papa what are you doing and it was like eat eating sugar no papa telling no, lies yeah. all this kind I of stuff it was in the tune of uh, baby shark kind of yeah they did no, well here, here's here's the problem yeah they the the version on yeah, that stupid lies, do, do, do. no that not the, the, that's that's that was a that's okay. a different one. That was yeah. A dumb video here's the yeah, here's the, yeah, here's the problem <laughs> with that with that 
a, another problem with that publication, other than their personal viewpoints, was that I think the video that they were actually connecting it to was not the correct meme video to begin with. I was like, wait a minute, that's not even the right one. So I, I had to search a little bit deeper, and then I found, oh, okay, so here's this character, a baby getting out of the, uh, sugar out of the pantry, putting it on his lap, just like that Johnny Depp poster and everything like that. Johnny, Johnny, yes, Papa. eating sugar, no, Papa. telling lies, no, Papa. open your mouth. And I talked to, I'll just say, somebody on the writing staff <laughs> of Animaniacs just kind of off the record going, hey, what's this about? And <laughs> this isn't about like domestic violence or divorce case or anything. And they said, no, 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 no. This was in 2018. We had no idea whatsoever. Um, and that it was basically just trying to tra- take something and show how you can make even a nursery rhyme dark, kind of like how that SNL sketch of – Remember it had the, the origin of Oscar the Grouch, uh, showing like it was kind of like the Joker, uh, but like Sesame Street was really dark and gritty. Mm-hmm. Kind of the same idea. Like, let's take this nursery rhyme, but make it like a Johnny Depp dark film. Um, that was supposed to be the joke. However, perception is everything. <laughs> uh, and this is the dangers of trying to be hip and trendy. It's like if you're focusing all your your efforts on that, two years later, that could change a lot. And so I would not be surprised if they changed that poster. Because I don't remember that meme. I barely remembered it. As soon as I saw the thing, I was like, oh, yeah. So I do remember for like a week that was a popular video. I saw it on like Twitter and stuff like that. But – that you know i don't think it was worth a joke in the- <laughs> it was a flash in the pan i mean totally it, it's not not like at all the one with like the yelling women and the cat because that one never will seem like it goes away and then the people that are staring you know the the guy to was it two women and the guy and they're looking back he's looking back at behind one and the other one's giving him a look that that's forever <laughs> you just see those a million times yeah there's there's certain videos it's like you could still make fun of like um Oh, the one that I still remember, which I, I, I shouldn't still laugh at it because I think the woman was actually hurt. But do you remember the video of like the woman who's stomping grapes and then she falls over and then she goes, oh, 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 oh. No, just That's me. Not, that was not even a meme, though. That was a, a video, wasn't it? Yeah, but that's still funny. Make fun of that. <laughs> We're just talking about funny things. Did you see this episode <laughs> of Animaniacs? <laughs> <laughs> well, my point is like that other video, that other Johnny Johnny thing, that's supposed to be just a stupid video that – People made fun of for a while, so why not? I don't know. Oh, just, okay, so it wasn't actually. It, it wasn't was something like, that went viral. It exactly, it was more like a viral video than just a meme. I mean, memes were made out of it. I guess you could say. Uh, right. Okay. At any rate, you're right, though. It's a flash in the pan. It wasn't really. It was not good. It was not a good writing decision. <laughs> I think. Um, and now we're seeing the consequences of what happens. The worst consequence that could possibly happen, which is extreme backlash of cancel animaniacs. And so I don't know. We'll see. I don't think this is going to really last that long, but you never know with the internet these days. We'll, we'll see. But the other thing that happened, which was a kind of a note was episode six of animaniacs was, uh, taken off Hulu because the brain showed a one 800 number. That was like five 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 number too. It was a five 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 number. So you think that has to be fake? But every five 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 number that you know they put in movies usually is fake. However, this Mm -hmm. one was not fake. I read somebody posted on Twitter that it's only five 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 up through like zero one nine nine. Oh, I mean, I, I I can't I don't I don't can't verify that, but that's what somebody said. So like two hundred only two hundred numbers. (laughs) <laughs> I would assume zero 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 is one of the <laughs> maybe <laughs> somebody find out no, <laughs> but don't sue us if you find out that it's a, a an adult uh, I would say what do they call it an adult party line <laughs> sure <laughs> uh, certainly wasn't appropriate for children that's for sure so they took it off the um, the episode so the episode was down uh, for about. A few hours. Hulu was actually pretty quick at do at flipping it around. They took it off Hulu and then they put it back up, 
but the number was gone. Uh, and then they took it and then they put it back up again with a different number up there right now. So if you call the number that's on episode six right now, it should just say this, you, this is not a valid number or something like that. But that's a, just an embarrassing week, I think, for the uh, reboot in general when it comes to that stuff. So I think we just should have noted that. <laughs> that was an Animaniacs news. Uh, well, anyway, let's go ahead and get to uh, this episode. This episode premiered on November 20th of 2020. Nathan, do you have a November 20th fact for us today? I- I do. Did you know that in uh, 1776, the American Revolutionary War, British forces landed on the Palisades and then attacked Fort Lee? Um, And then in 1789, on November 20th, New New Jersey became the first U.S. state to ratify the Bill of Rights. I did not know that. (laughs) That is November 20th. American history. Yeah, should be our... November 20th trivia. (laughs) Uh, Thank you for the November 20th trivia. Thank you. Well, let's go ahead and get into our our episode discussion for today. And we're going to start off with Warner's Unbound. And Warner's Unbound was written by Jess Latcher. Or I got I got her. Jess, if you're listening, can you can you let us know how to pronounce your last name? Uh, Jess Latcher and Andrew Barbeau, or Barbet, I'm saying it's Barbeau, directed by Adriel Garcia and Katie Rice. And Kelly, why don't you tell us what happens here in Warner's Unbound? Okay. And thank you, by the way. I have the Baby Shark song in my head. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Jeez, Nathan. Okay. Um, They're in ancient Greece, and we see a big statue of uh, the Warners, and it says on the statues their names are Dodicus, Yakicus, and (laughs) Wakicus. And um, there's somebody, it looks like they're about to graffiti the statues or something, and then gets uh, shot with lightning. And we realize it's the um, Warners that are doing the smiting, because now they're, they're Greek gods, and they're up in Mount Olympus and smiting people. And, uh, but they've got carpal tunnel syndrome because they keep the smiting going. And so they've got repetitive stress injuries and decide to take a vacation. And so they go on an island and then uh, by chance, Odysseus, uh, the wise, um, is, or so called the wise, at least in <laughs> the uh, Iliad. <laughs> Um, and the Odyssey. My hubris just gave me an idea. Let's soak those nerds. My eyes! My face! My inner face! <laughs> Aw, you guys need a towel. <laughs> It's funny, because they're wet, and they don't want to be. And that means mourners. So, and they're gods, so they can kind of do what they want. And so they um, they bring up this musician, musicians, and y'all are saying that it's supposed to be Justin Bieber. Yes. And I, I didn't get that. I, I was like, who is this and what... Um, you know, and I have listened to some of his songs. I'm not completely out of it, but I, it, I don't know. It didn't look like him to me. I, I, I couldn't tell. I, so I agree that it doesn't really look like him at all. However, it, um, it definitely, uh, it, it kind of. I think it sounded like Despacito to me. And, okay. Well, and and his name is the Bieber monster in the credits. So, oh, no, well, then that's a, tells you. I mean, it's hard to. Okay. I mean, it could be a coincidence. (laughs) What a coincidence. I'm going to eat you. Climbing through my mouth so I can meet you. I'm going to cut you up and put you on my pizza. And then I'll put that pizza in my mouth. They like it? It is kind of catchy. Nope. (laughs) Well, that one went over my head completely. But um, singing and then... um, 
Odysseus and his ship end up in his mouth. Um, and then they start dancing. And so the Warners are like, oh, I mean, he, they can't be enjoying this. But then they decide to put him in Hades. And there's a, um, I, I, I think they missed an opportunity here. But they see the um, uh, Sis- Sisyphean insanity ball. Which I guess I guess if Sisyphus was the one that rolled the ball up and down the yes. and um but they missed a real good opportunity here to put in Indiana Jones running from it. Uh just like <laughs> that. I agree. That would have been a great visual gag, but you know, whatever. Is this a Gia Ninja Warrior? <laughs> I love this show. Come on, everybody. Let me hear you scream. <laughs> Is he trying to win Hades? So he he goes through and act, treats Hades like an obstacle course, and thinks he's you know he's still having an awesome time, and so they they have one more trick up their sleeve, and um, then they put him on an island, and there's a cyclops, um, except the cyclops is big and orange and kind of looks like um, Trump, <laughs> and uh, just a little bit. Yeah, just slightly, right? (laughs) I am Odysseus, king of... I get it. People are always trying to come to my island because it's a very, very nice island. Literally, it's the finest island in the world. It's okay. I'm very rich. I have a great brain and these two very excellent eyes that I can see things very well with. He says that he's going to make Odysseus his own little loofah. So he picks him up and like starts scrubbing his tummy. And uh, Oh, not his tummy. just Not just his tummy. Well, like his chest tummy. <laughs> yes. Um, and, uh, oh, and I, I missed a, a reference. Um, but they when they were talking about what they were going to do to Odysseus and uh, it's like, oh, you know, we're going to put him through like emotional and, and psychological turmoil and send monsters after him. And uh, I think it was Yakko that says, oh, that sounds like an odyssey. So I thought that was funny because that's how where the word came from was Odysseus. And um, oh, and then also what were they going to do about their hands? Um, you know, because Hi- Hi- Hippocrates was on vacation and Hippocrates, you know, the Hippocratic oath for medical doctors and all that fun stuff. So um yeah, he um, he not, nothing phased him, and that's um, that's really about it. Yeah, I mean, they send him back to they send him back to Athens, right? And Ithaca. Well, Ithaca. Yeah. That's right, Ithaca. Not he Ithaca, did, New York. <laughs> he did not like the Cyclops. He that was the one thing He's that did phase him. Yeah, that, that was when he was finally like, I give up because he was not going to be a loofah. For the rest of his life. <laughs> that's right. They for, that's right. That's where that's where it all came down to him apologizing. Which and then as we, we had, found out that the Cyclops was a demigod. Oh, was it a demigod? Yeah. Uh, yes. So a few references in here. First of all, I thought online, I thought Jim Cummings was doing. I the, did. I thank wrote you. That. I wrote Jim Cummings question mark. Yes, I, I, I so much to the point where they put out this little uh, promo uh, with the "Let me hear your scream" part, and I was like, "Oh, that's Jim Cummings." And they, I put in the on Twitter like, "Oh, that's cool to to hear what appears to be Jim Cummings," and it's not. It's Diedrich Bader. So I, pr- I believe you pronounce his name, and he used to be on um, the Drew Carey show. Uh, he's, he's been on Napoleon Dynamite as the kind of the ninja. Remember not the, remember that karate instructor or something or a self, de- self defense instructor on Napoleon Dynamite? I don't know. He's a movie star. He's been on a bunch of different things. He's a funny guy. And he was the guy doing the voice of Odysseus right there. Um, I should also mention that, uh, and this is for the, the people on the wiki right there. Warner's Unbound, I believe, has a reference to, a movie I saw on Mystery Science Theater at one point called Hercules Unbound, uh, which, um, yeah, was, was actually it's it's really more like a reference to Prometheus Unbound. I well, think. then it goes to both. <laughs> <laughs> well, Prometheus, Prometheus Unbound is sort of like the uh, 
um, I, it was a poem by, by Percy Bysh. So, so there we go. So I give you the, I give you the, the dumb answer right there, which is just mystery science theater, but the more (laughs) literate, literate answer is Prometheus. Jeopardy answer. Exactly. (laughs) So I would, I would buzz in on Jeopardy and you say it's Hercules unbound. And I would put down all my money at the final Jeopardy question. I would get it all. I would lose it all because he didn't answer in a form of a question. First, that's of all. true. Also, <laughs> oh, I know. I you have a sore subject with, with Kelly right now. I'm sorry. Uh, let's uh, let's. There's a few other references um, that came up here. Uh, let's see. The uh, we already talked about the Justin Bieber. We talked about all the other things. I guess there's really, not really a lot. There's no. not really a lot. <laughs> I, I mean, know, the, it's just the general Homer's The Odyssey is the yeah. I mean, it really did summarize a lot of the parts of the Odyssey. The Bieber monster or whatever is kind of like obviously the sirens, but kind of combining it with some of the monsters that um, Odysseus came across. I think most important, most the one that biggest connection was probably there's a kind of a whirlpool monster uh, that swallows the ship, I believe towards the end of the, uh, the Odyssey, mm-hmm. uh, which I think it was kind of a two for one monster right there. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was nice. I was a little, um, I, I, I was kind of two minds on this. And one part of me, I was like, yeah, this is cool seeing the Warners as the gods. But another part of me said, I wonder if this would work. Maybe a little bit better if the Warners were playing the part of Odysseus instead, and like outsmarting all that because Odysseus yeah. is like a a yeah. clever. Yeah, there's these parts where he's like, "Oh, it's a, it's Ninja Warrior," and they're like, "Oh, we can't do anything to stop this guy." And to me, I'm thinking, see that shouldn't it be reversed? Shouldn't it be the Warners are foiling the gods who are start trying to stop them from doing something? You know, um, and then the gods finally give up uh, and just let the let Odysseus or the Warners be. I just think this would be, I, I don't know. I, th- I thought it was a good concept. I just would have flipped the, uh, the roles a little bit here, especially with Odysseus who is so hairy. He's got, I mean, he's got to do some bikini waxing right there. I'm just going to say that because there's a little too much hair on this guy for my liking. And uh, certainly the, the rubbing his face on the Donald Trump Cyclops nipple about seven times was a little hard to watch for me. <laughs> yeah. Although, although Maurice LaMarche doing the Trump uh, Cyclops was very funny. It was very, yeah, I was going to say he, he does a very good impression. Just <laughs> Well, wh- what about you guys? What did you think? What did you think about this, uh, this Odyssey uh, Warner's unbound Nathan? Let's start with you. Um, I liked how much of a, like a jock or whatever, like, I don't know. Just like a a frat boy or whatever Odysseus seems to be, like, right? Just kind of a funny character trait, and like his his wingman going like Odie 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 Odie. Um, I don't know if that's from anything in particular, or they're just saying Odie Odysseus's name. Yeah, uh, it was nice and, to see Ralph in there acting stupid, also. Yeah, but he's also very smart because he's like, it's funny because they're wet and they don't <laughs> want to be. <laughs> he figured it out. He, he figured, figured out the out. comedy. So, uh, yeah, um, I, I thought it was fun. Yeah. And, the the voice acting was good with Odysseus. I thought it was a very engaging, uh, exciting, you know, he's dumb, but also to the point that. I yeah. Know. I don't know. I, again, I, I thought he, I, I, but, I, I, I didn't, yeah, I, I do agree. Like seeing Yakko as Odysseus and like tricking the, Cyclops yeah, and just I'd thinking, rather see like, Yakko. I'm nobody, you know, doing the classic nobody joke is so funny in the Odyssey. Nobody is getting yes. away. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. Nobody. Yeah, nobody that would have been so good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're like, totally right. Funny, funny that's, joke. And that's totally something that the Warners could have done. Like, war- nobody blinded yeah. me. Nobody blinded me. And yeah, yeah you could have totally. Was- yeah, I totally think Yakko should have been Odysseus. You put. You put Dot and Wacko in there as the crewmates. Maybe keep Ralph in there too. Why not? Uh, mm-hmm. And put in some of the original Animaniacs characters in there. <laughs> you have enough of them. You don't need to put these real random, weird looking humans in there. You got a big cast to, to use. Come on. And then have the gods be the ones who are like, oh, these Warners, let's, you know, 
Let's yeah, stop and you them. You can make it like an even longer episode than that. Yeah, I, and that's you the can thing go too. Even more through it. Like, I, yeah, it did feel a little like you're just getting into it, and then it kind of just okay. That's it. Let's stop. So, mm-hmm. well, they only know. have enough time for because they're going to do three truly, segments, of and these. that they're 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 constrained by this format. I think is what I'm trying to mm-hmm. say. They got to get to the pinky in the brains thing, and I'm like, don't just. <laughs> Have it, have, have it be about the Odyssey, the whole thing. Go, go. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Kelly, any uh, other little things you you notes that you have, or anything you liked, things like that? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, I just want to add that um, Prometheus Unbound by Percy Shelley is actually a play rather than a poem because I, I double checked it. Ah. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, so you would have gotten the Jeopardy wrong too. All, all no, the probably, angry. I probably wouldn't have known it. <laughs> Twitter um, posts we've got in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> you know, I like to correct myself if I'm wrong. Um, so uh, just so we don't get the angry Twitter. Oh, yeah. Those angry uh, p- poetry and playwright people, they're going to be all. Um, some people are like that. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm one of those, so I know. Um, I, uh, I I liked, I really liked the um, Mount Olympus backgrounds. I thought they were really pretty, the the color and um, just the way the the visuals were in, in those segments. Um, uh, I just I really enjoyed that. And then um, yeah, having the Warner Tower like in the background that was all gold. Yeah, it was, stuff, it was, that was that was cool. Yeah, I thought it was really really beautiful. And um, uh, I, yeah, I think I mentioned everything else. Um, I. Uh, I, I hate that they did Odysseus dirty though, but and made him kind of a jerk because I've he's always been one of my favorite characters. Yeah. He is mm-hmm. so beloved in in the stories and and you know uh, wise and he it was his idea to do the Trojan horse and um, if I recall correctly, you can make Jason so, of the Argonauts a jerk because he was a jerk, oh, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, with Medusa and stuff and. Oh, right? No. Is it was he the guy? No, who's, no, he's uh, he's the fleece, right? The golden yeah. fleece, and uh, I think he was. Well, I think all these uh, all these Greek people are kind of jerks too, in a way. Well, I mean, they're, especially they're not Jason. Are, okay. <laughs> well, which by the way, at the end, why were they talking about the Roman gods? It's like, are they Greek gods or Roman gods? Right there, they're talking about the Roman gods made him a demagogue, or was it a demigod, or what? I don't know. I'm messing up the joke, but um, I'm like, wait, we're, I thought we were in Greece, not Roman. What's going on here? So. It was just, I don't know. To me, again, I I don't know about you folks, but if you if I just flipped it around a little bit, I would have absolutely loved this uh, segment. Um, because, like Kelly says, like Odysseus is the person you typically are cheering along. Like, go oh, yeah, Odysseus. He's a l- more likable kind of Greek character, I think, at least. Just he's trying like to get back. The few actual mortals in the stories. So mm-hmm. he doesn't have, I mean, he's got some ego, but he's not like the gods or the demigods or. Yeah, he's know. just like this normal guy. And like his only thing that he has is that he get, he's smart. Well, yeah. Mostly. And also, he, well, he is kind of stuck up though. I mean, it is like, yeah, he, but he's, 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 he's everybody else put wax in your ears. Things. Everyone else put wax in your ears, but me, I got to listen to this song, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but. Uh, but, but again, like, man, that would have been so good. Like if they did that, like imagine it flipping around and like Yakko saying, okay, everybody put wax in your ears. I got to hear this song. And then he starts hearing Justin Bieber singing and he's like tortured by it or something like that. And he's like, oh God, put wax in my ears. You know, like, I don't know. But they can't hear him. But they can't hear him. And they just keep rowing. And he's going, <laughs> oh, how horrible. Like that to me, like that. Now that's comedy. This was still <laughs> funny, but I just think it, it should have... Again, one more pass. One more pass. Yeah. Flip it around. Want to go over there and shut him up? Like he still wants to go there. <laughs> exactly. He wants to stop him. <laughs> stop Justin Bieber from singing. I need to go over to that island and make him stop. <sighs> oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next part right here, which is t- how to brain your dragon. And How to Brain Your Dragon was written by Greg White and Will Leslie Wild, and was directed by Adriel Garcia and Katie Rice. And Nathan, why don't you tell us what happens here in How to Brain Your Dragon? All right. Well, this episode, we get a new character to join the uh, Pinky and the Brain. It's now going to be Pinky, Brain, and Eggwind. Um, oh, but Eggwind's immediately taken away and, I guess, turned into a mouse kebab. Very well. Can I be Eggwind now? (sighs) 
So never mind. Uh, we find out we're in medieval times now. I don't know what happened. We were just in the year 2020, and they did a whole explanation of how we got to the year 2020, <laughs> but no explanation of how we get to the medieval time. No. <laughs> time lords. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they find out that there's a dragon in the forest, and the knight's like, hey, if anyone ever tamed this dragon, they could rule the world, and uh, some brain gets his idea, um, which would be to train a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> And take over the world. Behold, I am Brain, father of dragons. Wow. You're a father? Hey, God, you look great for someone who's had kids. Stop heckling my fantasy. Hey, I was watching that. So Pinky becomes a, a trusty steed to, to Brain. And so Brain rides Pinky all the way to the middle of the forest where they find a cave. Um... I guess on the way they meet some minstrels and Brain is very uh, adamant about how he hates minstrels and all the arts. But in the cave, we find out that the dragon is uh, likes the arts. He's an actor. He's a struggling actor himself. Um, he's a triple threat, I guess, because I think he wrote his own screenplays or something. And he's a singer and an actor. I don't know. I can't remember what the three things were. But uh, his name is Benedict. And uh, the brain tells him that the king wants to outrule all minstrels and all acting in the land. So they want to stop him. So the Benedict agrees to help him by acting like he uh, gets beaten by the brain. Brain does a little audition to make sure that Benedict can actually be terrorizing. Oh my gosh, did you see it? Did you see I did it? Yes. Yes, I did. More fire. More! Okay. Oh, look. Oh, brush fire. Should I put it out? Keep rolling. Stay in the moment. Show me large and intimidating. Yes, large and intimidating! Yes. Yes. Um, And after he burns down a bit of the forest, uh, the brain hires him. When they finally do their acting, though, um, it's going great. The The brain defeats the dragon. The dragon dies, or so we think. It's all an act, as you remember. Uh, the king <laughs> comes down, agrees to give brain the kingdom in exchange for the killing of the dragon. So as he's about to crown the brain, the dragon then starts going into these long Shakespearean deaths and acting out and dies repeatedly i think it's about three or four times on the final time he crashes into the castle destroying that that's enough you serpentine scallywag okay okay here's the grand finale all right well that should do it he's definitely dead this time how was i stop don't answer that. I was amazing. You were great. He got a really bored, didn't you, Brain? Knowing you, Pinky, is its own kind of medieval torture. And the king now, of course, realizes that this was all staged and decides to outlaw all minstrels, just like the Brain said he would. And all, all minstrels are locked up, starting with Pinky and the Brain. They're now locked up in the castle, which actually is open to the air since it's destroyed, so they could probably just <laughs> climb out of it. But uh, that's that's basically how that ends. So, All right, and there we go. So there's, uh, you know, some references. Like, you know, Benedict the dragon is most likely a, a reference to Benedict the... Uh, you know, Cumberbatch. Bener- B- yes, Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict the Cumberbatch. Benedict the Cumberbatch of Wales. No, I don't know. <laughs> the dragon from... Smog. <laughs> it's the dragon from the Hobbit named Smog. We're just all over the place. <laughs> anyway, so that was a kind of cool thing. But Pinky yells out uh, uh, Leroy Jenkins, which of course that was a that's a internet thing that hasn't gone away quite yet. Uh, it's always funny. Yeah, it's, it's I, a funny. To me. Do you know that was that was staged though, right? The original. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, oh. it's still funny. It's like you know, it's a it's a it was they, were, they did two takes of it, so you could see both takes and. Uh, they have them online, but um, you just you just broke my heart, Nathan. I thought. That oh, was really? Real. I'm sorry. Um, 
You're going it's on still, a plot path they can't it's follow. It's still funny. <laughs> like, it doesn't take a, Like, you watch an episode of Animaniacs, like, oh, it was scripted, so it's no longer funny. Like, <laughs> like they had a creative idea, and it's still... That's true. They, you know, it doesn't... They I don't punked think it me. Take away. Yeah, it's like... It's still a funny... They did a good job. It's great acting on everyone's part, and... <laughs> Yeah. Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> well, of course, the, the title of this uh, is How to Brain Your Dragon, which is, you know, How to Train Your Dragon. I think most people, at least listening today, sometime way in the future, if someone's listening to us, first of all, hi, future person. Second of all, uh, you, you need to know how to drain, train your dragon. It's a, it's movies that are out. Um, <laughs> uh, Edwin is uh, similar to Larry, like, you know, Pinky the Brain and Larry. Mm-hmm. I just stole that idea. But yeah, we just should have had a new theme song at least. That would have been. I agree, but you know, I think Edwin comes back. If I'm not mistaken, we might be seeing more of him later. Uh, and uh, you know, they, he, Benedict says a lot of quotes from Shakespeare when he's dying, and of course does the uh, Yo Adrian from Rocky. And uh, I think one of the things that, even though it's not really. I think it might have been an influence to this was the story of the reluctant dragon to me kind of came up when I was watching this. I was I also thought of a uh, Braveheart just because I've never seen Braveheart. The dragon in that has to act is Sean Connery. He's a uh, are you talking no. about Dragonheart? No. Dragonheart. That's what I meant. Dragonheart. <laughs> It has a heart in it. I'm like dragon heart. Uh, for, Those are very different. Very different. I got, uh, I got very. I was like, wait, there's a dragon in the movie Braveheart. I thought that was a real story. <laughs> I was very confused. Real. Dragons are real. <laughs> wow. Um, oh, there's also, there the, also. You're going to yeah, take uh, it away from me, Nathan. What, what's Game the of reference? Thrones? I was Game, of say Game of Thrones. Which, yeah, yeah that's says, exactly what I was going to say. That was King funny. of the Dragons. Yeah, he was dressed as Daenerys. The, the hair was hilarious. Which I have yet um, to see an episode of. There was even that. a flash dance reference to that. You missed. That's true. Flash dance. Flash dance. <laughs> Where did he get the water? Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, but to me, it, it was very similar to me, like Reluctant Dragon, where it's like, you know, the knight has to go and they have to fight and, and impress everybody, uh, but not really kill the dragon. So to me, it was, if you ever see the reluctant dragon it is on Disney plus. It's actually a very, uh, I think educational, well, sort of it's somewhat historical. It's Disney history of how they make a cartoon. So, uh, you know, some of it's mm, real ish. Some of it's not, but at least you get to see a lot of, um, a lot of the Disney studio, and uh, they show the reluctant dragon as the main feature, and it's very similar to this. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. What were some things that you guys liked about this, uh, Kelly? Let's start with you. Um, well, the brain at one point did say uh, the dragon, the dragon. He did, <laughs> uh, and so I really, really liked that, um, and. We've already talked about burninating because that's what came to my mind and the uh, Khaleesi and let's see. Oh, um, when Pinky, it, I guess when Brain, um, I guess he was talking about them being minstrels or, or, or he was talking about something at the beginning, I, I think it was. And then um, Pinky said, but Brain, you've always said the Renaissance is French for bolt. And then he stops. Yeah. And I thought that was funny. Um, <laughs> and um, and I thought the dragon sounded a little bit like Jeremy Irons. Yes, it wasn't. It was. He's voiced by. Let me just pull it up right here. I, I, Benedict I, Cumberbatch. It's Fred, and, no. It's, yes. <laughs> no, it's, he was voiced by Fred Tata Tata Siore, which I'm. I believe I'm. I have to be mispronouncing his name, but he's a voice actor. He does a very. I, it sounds like a like somebody like somebody I should know. It sounds like a very natural actor voice to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. It just reminded me of Jeremy Irons. I, I, I agree. I like the scar in there a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Well, uh, Nathan, what about you? Um, I liked Pinky's response to what well, are you pondering? What I'm pondering. He's like, nothing, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> that was, that was a good response. <laughs> 
again, I'm wondering like they've had to they had to have said that at some point in some of the picky of the brain, right? Maybe. Because yeah, I, probably. Because but that's just it's a funny response. It's a so. funny response. Um, I I, I kind of liked the whole uh, Pinky almost swearing, and I kind of didn't at the same time. Um, but considering how he's quoting the brain, I, I guess it works. Um, I don't know. Whenever they, whenever they kind of allude to the characters actually, um, whenever they allude to the characters actually cursing, I, it kind of makes me go, oh, I don't know. <laughs> but it, that's just a little nitpick. It's not a huge deal for me. Uh, I did like, uh, that the king, uh, was voiced by Frank Welker and he kind of sounded like plots to me. Your Majesty! What is it? Is it something bad? I bet it's something bad! Yes, your. Is it that witch? Did that witch come back? <laughs> ah, dragon called the witch! Like a British version of uh, the CEO. And yeah, on, on the Animaniacs wiki, for some reason, they have um, the king, and it just says, in parentheses, Thaddeus plots. <laughs> I was like, like well, maybe. I, no. It doesn't really look like him. No, but it might, it's uh, not yeah. supposed to be Thaddeus plots. I it's, don't. It's, I, 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 <laughs> it's different. He's short, and he doesn't look. I mean, later in, in the season, or maybe it was, yeah, it's later in the season, they show a, a painting of Thaddeus plots on the wall and mm-hmm. it looks exactly the same. Like, I don't think they, yeah, exactly. If so he were to appear, they... he wouldn't change that much. Yeah. So I don't know why, picture. why it says that in there. It's just I weird. don't know um, either, but it sounds credits... similar and he acts the C act similar, which yeah. makes me, which makes me miss plots. I was thinking, I was all like, Oh man, I miss plots. Uh, because as you know, find the, the, you know, female CEO, I get it. You know, that's, it's cool. And she seems mean and a great foil for the Warners, I suppose. But Thaddeus plots was like somebody who is like a mean guy, but at the same time was so neurotic and had so many different, um, fallacies about him and yeah kind of dumb. <laughs> he had and he's kind of stupid and he has clownophobia <laughs> and all these little things that i i kind of i just miss about plots the, the thing that made me hit with the king was oh, i miss plots oh well but at least frank welker is doing a similar character anyway what were you saying about the cre- the credits oh and the credits frank welker's uh Credit as uh, the King, Ralph, and Ralphicus, which I thought was funny that his other Ralph character has a different name, like Dot. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> Chris McNeil, Rob Paulson are only Yakko, Dot, and Wacko, not Wackakiss and Dotakiss. Does Ralph not? I mean, he's in the cre- opening credits. Yeah, like I'm Ralph. like, does Ralph say anything other than in the as Ralphicus? But he's in. He's credited as both being Ralph and Ralphicus. Well, so. good. Maybe I gave him a little bit of money, more money right there. (laughs) Um, Oh, I voiced three characters. Um, Well, uh, I guess let's go ahead and move on to the, the last segment of today's episode. And that was Suffragette City. Suffragette City was written by Jess Latcher and Andrew Barbeau, and it was directed by Katie Rice. This has got to be a, so the, the the title alone reminded me of Paradise City from Guns N' Roses, which may or may not be <laughs> the case. But uh, it is a song which made me very excited. And it made me very excited because it was talking about the suffragette movement. And it started talking about all these different uh, three major uh, suffragettes, uh, Elizabeth Katie Stanton. Susan B. Anthony and Sojourner Truth. It's insane for us to think today that women used to have no say in matters of the government. The line of thinking usually went. You do not need a ballot to finish your needlepoint. Even though men called them gorgons and their corsets crushed their organs, suffragettes, they rocked the boat to help us win the right to vote. And talking about the right to vote, which, of course, I mean, how, what a great time to talk about voting is, is, you know, a hundred years ago, and of course, we just had a major election. Voting is every on um, everybody's mind, and so I was all for let's learn about suffragette movement. Yes, to to a song and get some history, but the song <laughs> changes <laughs> pretty quickly, and it turns it turning into uh, equal representation for cartoon characters, and essentially turns into let's just show a bunch of cameos from different. Um, cartoon characters and nathan 
was he was not happy enough with on the wiki. It said various Looney Tunes and Hanna Barbera characters make cameos, and Nathan decided to try to list off as many of those as he could. We might be missing some of these. I don't think so. Unless like I didn't list all of the Flintstones because I was like I don't want to. <laughs> They're all there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we have Bugs Bunny. We have that little chicken hawk guy who I think has a name, but you know he's a chicken hawk. <laughs> yeah. Foghorn Leghorn, Witch Hazel. The Rubbles and the Flintstones, Snagglepuss, Secret Squirrel, Marvin the Martian, Gossamer, Babs and Buster Bunny, made a quick little appearance, Sylvester, Speed Buggy. And cast. And cast, yeah. They kind of, <laughs> Yaki, Yaki Doodle, who's that little yellow duck, Oggy Doggy and Doggy Daddy, a Ricochet Rabbit, Elmer Fudd, The Lunatics, Roadrunner, Pinky, Taz, The Brain, Wiley Coyote, Tweety, Magilla Gorilla, The Jetsons, Yogi and Boo Boo, Huckleberry Hound, Penelope Pitstop. That's a Porky Pig's girlfriend, I believe, right? No. No? Okay. <laughs> Who's Penelope Pitstop? Oh, she's one she, of the Hanna Barbera characters. Yeah, she's a Hanna Barbera driver. She I'm has thinking, a pink helmet. I'm thinking of Petunia as Porky Pig's girlfriend. Anyway, and Porky Pig's there. <laughs> and oh, I should mention it's just George Jetson, I believe, not just. Oh, the Jetson. okay. Okay. Um, and there could, there's so many characters that I think are just originals from like, I didn't, yeah, you know, there's, there's, I, they just kind of threw in various tunes. It, it, yeah, I'm pretty, but it's possible. There could be someone in that group that I'm like, Oh, that's a Hanna Barbera character that does not look familiar at all. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So this was, this was a uh, chock full of different uh, people. All together now. Robots, monsters, tiny tooth, Sylvester talking cars. It's time to band together, time to give cartoons the vote. I, I wish it was a little bit different, but it was it was still cute to, um, to see that. Uh, what, were, what were some of the things you guys liked or something I missed? Uh, let's start with you, Nathan. Well, I was going to say Suffragette City is a song by David Bowie. You're kidding me. Yeah, this is a song. I was just like, let me Google Suffragette City. <laughs> well, that's awesome then. Again, <laughs> and I was like, I, I'm losing Jeopardy questions. That was just yeah. a guess on my part, though. I was like, when I was oh, like, like Paradise City, City, I was like, this must be something that's close something. to referencing. Oh, there's something much closer. Yeah, there's a the literal song called Suffragette City. I heard a <laughs> little bit of it. I think it sounds better than this song, but I only heard like uh, 30 seconds of it or something. But Well, I um, also have to point out that um, Arizona gave women suffrage, I believe, in 1912, eight years before the rest of the country, or at least was one of the first... The first progressive states to give women the right to vote. So their United States history. Kelly, what were some things, uh, anything you liked in this uh, little uh, song at the end of the episode? I liked Dot's outfit. I did too. Which I, one? <laughs> I liked her little hat. Oh. <laughs> I guess my, my only complaint is really I just wanted this song to be actually educational <laughs> yeah i wish it was all about the actual 1920 or even before like the actual 1919 when they it got passed in the congress would be more interesting i think like i think they were focused like oh it has to be about 1920 because it's exactly 100 years ago and i'm like well you know that's like, when it finally it gets, got ratified but that's not when it got voted on even <laughs> yeah you could you could like you could make it educational and funny talking about the women's suffrage movement how many years it took and how wrong this was and yeah and i mean like, and, all three of those women have died like 20 years before yes. 1920 like they had died in 1906 i think and was instead the last they one. tried to like just make it goofy like having like lasers come out of sojourn of truth's eyeballs <laughs> If people want to learn more about the suffragette movement, um, I would like to recommend an episode of a TV show from the early 90s. It's called The Young Anna Jones Chronicles. <laughs> and this is about the suffragette movement in England because um, it was the London 1916 episode with Elizabeth Hurley. Um, but it was good and it was enjoyable and it had Vanessa Redgrave. And so I, uh, I think you can learn a lot just by watching that. That's very educational. And good, and Sean Patrick Flannery is in it. So, so there you go. So if, so teachers, I wouldn't show this cartoon for to learn about suffragette movement to your yeah. students. I would give them give them the Indiana Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. It's show too bad. Yeah, like it's just such a, a missed opportunity for every time I could 
get an educational song out of Animaniacs. It's so much better. Than yeah, because it sticks with you. And it's like this was like their golden opportunity to really do something with it. And no. I didn't even like the tune. Yeah. Mm. Which I wouldn't mind if it was educational. <laughs> it started. It started. The tune itself, I think, it started more. It started off more like a song at the beginning, and then it became less and less of a song, more of a a chant kind of thing, as yeah. as it went on. Again, it just it started off so promising. Yeah, I was like up in my chair, getting all excited. Like, this is, we don't get one of the songs. Yeah, I, I started smiling. I mean, really, like I this episode, like I, you know, so far, like they had some humorous moments in it, but this was the first time, like Nathan, you said, I sat up a little straighter in my chair, and I went, oh, like, no, this is going to be great. And then it just, you know, it got. I think it was just a cheap. It was almost like cheap jokes. Like just throw a bunch of cartoon characters in there that people go yeah. look and. People have responded positively to it. Like, I saw Buster and Babs. It's like, well, yeah, you saw them, but they didn't do anything. It's like, I could draw a picture. <laughs> well, I can't I draw mean, a picture. I, but I kind of get that, though, because like when I watch the Academy Awards and stuff, I get excited. Oh, oh, Steven Spielberg. I mean, people tweet me on Twitter, <laughs> and it's like, Kelly, we saw Spielberg. He's just sitting there. He's not presenting. He's not doing anything. Kelly, we saw Spielberg. I get excited. So I, I get it. I yeah. Mean, I, just wish the, I just wish the content of the song was just... Yeah, and something. It's just, I feel like it almost kind of uh, minimizes. I don't know. Like cartoons need the right to vote, and I'm like, so wait, like do, do they not have the right to vote in their universe? It's kind of a weird, yeah. It started like, getting off to this weird tangent. Like, wait, okay, could, let's, no, let's go back to education. It, the song itself reminded me of the alphabet lost and found from They Might Be Giants, which I don't like that song. But <laughs> <laughs> I think just because the 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 talking over, like like the reporter. Yeah, as part of the song. Yeah, it it like, just it did it's it it was not a song. There was nothing I could like sing back along to later. Uh, I was really hoping for something like that and something I could show my kids at school for years to come. And mm-hmm. nope. So that was a big disappointment for me. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get to our water tower rating. On so, that note. On that note. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into water tower rating. Uh, Nathan, what about you? What do you think? How many water towers out of five would you give this episode? Okay. Well, last week I gave the episode three so that I could compare it. And I don't know. It's about the same. So <laughs> <laughs> I keep going back and forth whether this one was better or worse than the first episode. Um, so I guess I'll just give it three again. <laughs> okay. So it's about the same. <laughs> about the same. Cause I, uh, I really don't like the suffragette song in this one. Um, yeah. And I did enjoy how to bring your dragon and I can't even remember the Warner one right now, but I think it was fine. No. Yeah. The Odyssey. Odyssey. Yeah, Odyssey fine, is, so. It's a great, that's a I great think, comment when you're like, I can't even remember the Warners. In the, I remember like, oh, not yeah. hating it. So yeah, no, that's it, exactly. Um, I'm going to give it three. If the Suffragette song was better, I'd probably give it a four or something, but I just really didn't like that. Yeah. Okay. Kelly, what about you? I'm going to give it a four. I, um, I think the, the pinky in the brain, the, the first Warner segment were really strong and, um, you know, they, they both had some really good, uh, funny lines and, and I genuinely laughed. And so, I mean, literally out loud. So, you know, it was funny if I did that <laughs> and um, cause usually I laugh inside and uh, <laughs> I, uh, um, I'll just disregard the suffragette song. Um, and, uh, <laughs> just pretend it didn't happen. Um, because the, the other two things I liked, I liked it much, much more. And, and of course I can't give it a five because there was no Steven Spielberg in this one. <laughs> okay. Note to writers of the Animaniacs reboot: If you want five star or five water towers, you got to put a little bit I of mean, Steven in every episode. If Season you go two. back to our old ratings, it, not every episode I gave a five two had Spielberg, but it had to be really top tier. Like usually, yeah. the ones I gave five two, y'all gave fives two as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a Wally Lama or something. So, no, oh, Wally, Wally Lama is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a slightly higher than the first episode. I'm gonna give it a three. Gave the last one a two point five. Uh, I, I, again, this, I just, 
the problem I'm having with this series so far is that I'm just like, this is a good concept. Let's do one more pass at it. Like, again, I just... There's no way I'd ever be a writer of a TV show. I'm not. I was about to say. So what you're saying? They need to hire you. They need to hire me. No, I'd be. If you were a writer, it would be better. I would be horrible. (laughs) I would be horrible. I am not gonna. No, but I'm just saying. If I, if in a weird world, I'm not even gonna say a perfect world. I'm gonna say a weird world in which I am put into there, and I'm there saying, Joey, here's this script. I'd be like, okay, one more pass. Flip. Flip the Warners, make them Odysseus, make them Odysseus and the people, you know, and, and that's then, a big pass on the. <laughs> and then, uh, I Pinky the Brain, I think keep pretty much the same. I think that was a that was the strongest bit again. And then that Suffragette thing, just start it and keep talking about the Suffragette movie. Yeah, it would scrap all the cartoon part. No, of it. like, it's so need dumb. It. So like it was just it was, and we could save some money, but we don't have to hire the all these voice actors for all these cartoon characters. <laughs> exactly, it was just cheap. It was just done for cheap laughs, and I just i i didn't i didn't take the bait. It didn't. It, I don't care about that. I care about I care about seeing something educational that I'm going to learn something and have it in my head, and I know kids are going to learn about it too. Like something about the suff- suffrage movement was, uh, I think, important, and they had a golden opportunity, and they dropped the ball. But it was better than the first season, the first episode, I should say. So, three. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get to some contact information. Nathan, where can people get in contact with you online? Joey, I'm on Twitter, Django FT. That's me. All right, and Kelly, what about you? I'm also on Twitter, Yoda Princess, Y O D A P R N C S S, or email me, Kelly, at bigshinyrobot.com. All right, and as for the Animating Cast, we're on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And of course, you can give us an email, animaniacast at retrozap.com. I forgot to put out a poll this week asking everybody what you thought about episode two of the Animaniacs reboot. So send us an email. You can send us an email, animaniacast at retrozap.com. And speaking of RetroZap, it is a fantastic website. You should go to it today for fantastic articles and, of course, podcasts. We're a proud member of the RetroZap Podcast Network. And you can head on over to our Discord server. Get a welcome link by going to discord.animaniacast.com. You can talk to us and to all the other folks who work at RetroZap about anything pop culture. Well, that'll do it for this week. So, for Nathan and Kelly, this is Joey saying good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, Freakazoid, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respected trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacast unless otherwise indicated. Pinky, are you pondering what I'm pondering? I think so, Brain. Nothing, right? Thank <laughs> you.